Welcome back to Crist Mining and today I show you how I clean my mining graphic cards. We'll do two methods. The simple one, getting rid of dust without taking anything apart in case you don't want to void your warranty. And the more extensive one where we'll actually take a card apart, clean it from the inside and reapply thermal paste. So our patient today is my oldest mining card which is still running. A R9 280X Windforce edition with 3 GB from GB. It has been gaming most of its life and then got to work in the mines more than one year ago. I've never reapplied thermal paste with this one so it's a good test to see if we have any differences in temperatures after the cleaning process. So before we start we are now looking at the card while mining before touching it. We are around 67 degrees celsius when mining Dagger Hashimoto. This means the Ethereum algorithm. Let's see if we can get those numbers down. So what do we need? For the simple cleaning you just need a can of compressed air which you can buy on Amazon. I bought the compute cleaner some time ago because I'm cleaning parts regularly and I didn't want to have the waste of cans. The compute cleaner sets you back around 50 bucks but there are even more luxurious versions out there like the DataVac. For cleaning and reapplying thermal paste we need a microfiber cloth and then isopropanol. This means 99% alcohol which you can get almost everywhere too. I got mine from a nail shop on Amazon for example. Other people also use baby wipes for this but be careful that you don't use anything perfumed. We just need pure alcohol. Then of course thermal paste itself. I decided to go for a more expensive one by Thermal Grizzly because I've heard a lot of positive things about it and I've never tried it before. So we'll see if we can actually see some differences later. The last thing we need except for a screwdriver is a bit luxurious. It's the WD-40 contact cleaner. So not the ordinary WD-40 you'd use for stuck parts or rust. So the simpler cleaning part I try to do regularly every time I work on the rigs. This just means taking the card and blowing it out with your canned air or compressor. What's important here is that you hold the fans themselves in place because they could be damaged if you overspin them too much. I'm not sure if you can see the dust flying away in the footage or the dust on this back bracket which does not move with the blower. So we'll use the WD-40 later on that once we have disassembled it. If your room is dusty or you have pets this alone could get your temperatures down again but for the R9 this was already a standard procedure, so let's go deeper. Normally we just flip our card and then we'll unscrew the cooler itself from the PCB. But for this Windforce card I'll remove the plastic of the cooler with the fans first, because you just need to unscrew four little screws for that. Then there's also a little black bracket which I'll actually leave off. On the GPU die itself I would work in a cross pattern, like when applying a cooler or car tires, so that not much pressure is only on one side. Mind that um, depending on your GPU you could void your warranty with this. So only do it if you don't want to RMA it later or the time is long gone like for my R9. Some manufacturers like EFGA accept cards back even if you have pulled them apart. So please check your individual GPU brand here. After we have unscrewed everything we can pull it apart. A general rule is not to pull too harshly. Wiggle slowly and only use slight force. Then. We can unplug the cooler and we have our three separate parts. And holy crap, uh, it was really time to do this video. Excuse the dust porn, but it only shows that we are doing this for a reason. Now we can check how the thermal paste did hold up. So this one is already dried and it's crumbling between my fingers. So it was a good time to do it. Do you see the dust on the inside too? It's just not reachable with any blower alone, so getting rid of this dust was worth it in itself. Here again I'd blow out the cooler and the card in itself, because we can reach everything better now. Many people also recommend to add some smearing oil to the fans, because hair and dust can still be hindering it, so for this you'd have to take them apart and smear them, but be very careful. Then continue to blow out the rest. Some dust even stays with the blower as you can see, but we'll use the contact cleaner for that later. So we are cleaning the PCB, generally everything with the WD-40 contact cleaner. But be careful that everything of it has dried before you continue. I use the dry side of a microfiber cloth to help a bit with getting rid of the dust. Others like to use the alcohol or baby wipes for this too, but I just use the alcohol for removing the thermal paste, which we'll do in a second. 
your GPU might have thermal pads too, like you can see here. And with those, we have to be careful because otherwise you'd need to replace them and you'd need the exact same width of thermal pads. So be sure to reuse your original ones if still possible and don't use thermal paste here. Then it's only reapplying the thermal paste. So first we clean every bit of the old residue left off with our alcohol and the microfiber cloth. For applying thermal taste, there are many, many philosophies about doing this. I just like to put on a little dot and Thermal Grizzly had a thingy for spreading it, so I did it this time. Normally there's no need for spreading because our heatsink will do that when we put it back together. So that's already it for the cleaning process. What's left to do is the same things we did before, just in reverse, so putting the card back together. <laughs> Don't forget to plug the fence back in like I did, otherwise you have to fumble around. Good that I have small hands. Also, don't go too tight on the spring-loaded GPU screws. We are looking good and the card is looking some years younger now. But let's see if we can actually see some differences in temperature. And yes, it was worth it. The temperatures in my mining room were the same since I did all of this in the span of some hours. But we actually did drop around 5 degrees for ETH hash on this card. You might argue that this is not much, but in my opinion it's well worth it, especially for the general lifespan of the card. So this was the hottest card of my AMD rig, so I'm more than happy that we could squeeze some better numbers out. All of my other cards are younger, but I'm now thinking of also doing the same process for some of my other cards. So this is already it for the video. We've cleaned an old graphic card and actually dropped its temperatures by around 5 degrees. So this was a success. Links for everything I mentioned are in the comments and you support our channel if you use those links, so thank you for that. And if you want to see more on this topic, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. And I have one more crazy idea for another fan mod, but this is for another video. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice week.